Imagine this, a journey from the bustling world of corporate finance in Cairo, Egypt, to the seductive allure of the barbecue pits in Austin, Texas. <laughs> to you, this might sound like an unlikely trick, but let me tell you, it has been a journey full of authenticity, joy, and endless passion. I have found that my greatest success comes when I'm truest to myself. But even then, as the saying goes, behind every overnight success are years of hard work. Today, I would like to share with you my story, a story fueled by the fire of persistence. You see, food has always been my love language. <laughs> my happiest childhood memories are the days spent with family, cooking meals together at my grandma's house, sharing stories and laughs on the dinner table. It was there that I learned the undeniable magic of food and its ability to bring people together. At 11 years old, I was faced with a harsh truth. My father sat me and my brother down on his lap, and he told us that he had multiple sclerosis. For those of you familiar with MS know, it is a devastating disease, progressively robbing the person of his motor function throughout the course of many years. I will never forget the look in my father's eyes that day when he told us, I will never let this or anything else stop me from doing everything that I want to do for you. And he never did. I watched as he became the department head of an international engineering company and invested in multiple entrepreneurial projects. Amidst his adversity, my father maintained remarkable determination. And ever since, his courage and power became my source of inspiration. Given his influence, I took my father's advice and pursued a degree in finance. A few months after graduation, I found myself here, <laughs> working in one of the largest banks in Egypt. My future was set. I would spend my days climbing the corporate ladder and relish in the success of good pay, health benefits, and job security. <laughs> I've made it, or at least it seemed so for a little while, until I found myself stuck in this nine-to-five cycle that felt more forced and soulless than inspiring. I had to wear a suit and tie every morning, and I even had to shave my mustache. This trap of success defined by society can be an easy place to get stuck. Truth was, I was living someone else's definition of success. All the while, smoldering beneath the surface was a hunger, a craving for something more fulfilling, something that would set my soul on fire. Fortunately, amidst this nine to five grind, I took my first trip to the US to visit a friend in Austin. My friend took me straight from the airport to Rudy's barbecue. <laughs> Not knowing he was about to change my life forever. <laughs> I walked in this restaurant and all of my senses were awakened. I never knew a barbecue joint could smell like a campfire. And I never knew you could make brisket, such a tough and fatty cut, so tender and juicy, only using salt pepper, and a live fire. Wait a minute. Barbecue is magic. <laughs> so after an unforgettable weekend in Austin, I went back to my day job in Cairo. But every time I tried to get my work done, all I could think about was brisket, brisket, brisket. <laughs> so I decided I wanted to, to start experimenting with smoking brisket. But the only equipment I could find in the entirety of Egypt was your classic backyard kettle grill. The first brisket I ever cooked went straight from the grill to the trash. <laughs> that didn't stop me, though. My obsession turned into relentlessness. And for the next four years, I kept trying my hand in smoking meats, cooking for friends, family, and anyone who wanted to come eat. And it wasn't long until I realized I had to go back to Texas to learn more. 
So I saved up all my vacation days and I booked a flight back to Austin. I knocked on every single barbecue restaurant door, asking for a job, asking for a mentor to teach me how to cook. And despite my best effort and genuine enthusiasm, I was faced with rejection after rejection after rejection. Yet, I refused to give up. And by the end, I was offering my services for free in exchange for this invaluable knowledge and experience that I craved. And it wasn't until the very last weekend when I walked up to pitmaster Bill Curlin in his food truck. And I asked him, will you teach me? And I remember as he closed his smoker door, he looked back at me and he said, yeah, why not? <laughs> he said yes. Despite all this rejection, despite knowing that I had everything to lose, I did not give up until a door finally opened. Finally, I could see a glimpse of the light way far down this long road. So now that I had a job, the one thing left to do was to break the news to my Middle Eastern family <laughs> <laughs> that I'm quitting this great corporate job with a stable income and going to move across the world to work in a kitchen, <laughs> in a trailer, in Texas, for free. <laughs> to say the least, making this announcement had its cultural challenges. Yet, I did not, could not turn my back onto what seemed to me my undeniable fate. So I decided to set myself, myself free. I quit my job, packed my bags, and off I went chasing my dreams. If I had known the saying back then, I would have told all the doubters, y'all may go to hell. <laughs> I'm going to Texas. I did it. I finally made the jump across the world. And as I started working with Curlin, I asked him, why did you say yes when everyone else said no? And he simply replied, you are the only one that showed up to my door in person. The lesson I learned that day was crystal clear. If you can maintain a spirit of optimism, be brave, open, and persistent, the universe will always meet you halfway. Over the next three months, I fell in love with Austin and Texas. The hospitality and the warmth of its people reminded me of home. And that's when things began to shift for me. When I first moved to Austin, my plan was clear. To master the craft of barbecue and take it back to Cairo. But as time passed, my goals took on a new shape. Instead of returning to Egypt, I decided to take on the challenge of going head to head with the juggernauts of barbecue. <laughs> Watch out, Texas. Here comes the Egyptian cowboy. <laughs> Throughout this journey, I've learned one lesson over and over again. A dream is a living thing. Watching my father seize new opportunities, adapt and face challenges head on motivated me to do the same. And despite how unclear my future seemed, I decided to follow what lit my soul on fire and to stick with it till the end. Over the next six years, I trained under the best fit masters in the world. I created my own barbecue curriculum, learning everything I could about Texas barbecue. I also studied culinary arts in Austin Community College. And they still have my face on their pamphlet. <laughs> And then one day, while working at Valentina's, I had my light bulb moment. What if I took the magic of Texas barbecue and fused it with my beloved Egyptian flavors? The fragrant salads, the warm spices like sumac and cinnamon, the aromatic spice nuts, the creamy tahini, and even the bright pomegranate barbecue sauce. I turned my kitchen into a test lab, 
I started hosting dinners and pop-ups, constantly building and refining my new Egypt to Texas menu. It was hard work, but finally starting to realize that I could make a living selling my own creations made it all feel so easy. In February of 2020, I was ready to climb the final summit and open my own business. So I quit my full-time job at the butcher shop. It was finally time for me to make my dream come true. And then the pandemic hit. I lost everything all at once. My full-time job, my cooking classes, my private dinner bookings, for the foreseeable future, they were all gone. Just like that, overnight. I didn't know what to do. I started driving for Uber and DoorDash, barely making ends meet. I thought I had it. I was almost there. Instead, I entered this dark tunnel and I could not see the light anymore. I felt so defeated. However, this fire inside me just would not die. It was time for these ideas to be brought to life. <clears throat> now it was my turn to use the strength and the resilience that my father has passed on to me. I knew I owed it to him, to myself, and to the world to keep trying. You see, I truly believe that each one of us is born here in this world to do something. And I was born here to create delicious and beautiful food. So working under the constraints of the pandemic, I created my own underground Egyptian supper club. Inviting small groups of people to my dinner table for a high-end six-course Egyptian meal. Equipped with all this knowledge that I gained, I wanted to dive back into the roots of Egyptian cuisine. It was a creative playground where I had a chance to cook all the food I've always dreamed of. Word of the supper club spread quickly, going from four friends on a random Tuesday night to eight people twice a week with a six-week waiting list. I was able to turn the constraints of a global pandemic into what became one of the most monumental drivers on my business success. And as the restrictions lifted, I hosted another pop-up. And by the time I was ready to start serving, I looked up and I could not believe my eyes. The line wrapped around the building. All these people from Texas are lined up to eat my food. That was the moment that I really realized I had something. I even got my first feature in the local paper. Finally, I could see the light again. And by the end of 2021, I had a business plan and a blueprint for my dream kitchen on wheels. I was able to project sales, costs, and profits for the next five years, providing potential investors with a clear idea of what to expect. I guess my parents were right all along. A finance degree did come in handy. <laughs> KG Barbecue finally opens its doors to the public in October of 2022, and it has just been like hanging on to the side of a rocket ship. I often feel as though I've created something larger than myself. The local and the national news now visit us on the truck regularly. We're getting featured on The Economist. CBS Sunday morning. Bon appétit. Texas Monthly Magazine. I got named the Rising Star Chef of the Year by Star Chefs Magazine. And within less than six months of operations, I got a James Beard nomination for the best chef in Texas. To say the least, this has been a dream come true. People now show up from all over the world, telling us how far they travel to try our food. 
families from Egypt visit us in the truck and they tell me how proud and happy they are to see a fellow Egyptian representing our country and taking this old cowboy tradition by storm. Yet Egyptian mothers remain to be my toughest customer. <laughs> I know the spotlight is on me now, but I owe so much to the mentors that taught me how to cook. And this knowledge it doesn't belong to me. It is my duty to keep sharing it with the world. And I now teach brisket classes in my food truck twice a month for 35 guests. I would be nothing without my incredible team. I haven't done it alone, and neither will you. It is important to stay humble enough to realize that. All it takes is courage, belief, and persistence. And the world will always put the right people in front of you. Finally, I want to share with you the most touching letter that I've ever received in my life. Dear Mr. El Gayash, I am an inmate in Wisconsin. And I saw you in a Texas Monthly article. I have ideas of starting my own food truck, and I thought I'd write to you to inquire about some pointers. I have unfortunately had my legal issues due to poor choices I've made. I am 100% accountable for my actions, but I look at my situation with optimism. I'm trying to develop a plan for myself when I return to the community that will be successful for my child and my family. I love food and especially barbecue. Thank you for your time and concern with this matter. I look forward to your response. Good luck and hook em horns. You will never know how far your light will shine, who you will touch and inspire, simply by following your heart and being true to yourself. By being who you are, you give permission to others to do the same. By some beautiful serendipity, today is the 12th anniversary of my father's passing. He was gone before I even had my first bite of brisket. Moments like these are when I miss him the most. I wish he was here, right here, watching me stand on this stage and share our story. I am proud to carry his legacy, enjoying life and never letting anything stand in the way of my goals and dreams. I love you, Dad. I know you'd be so proud. I now invite you to ask yourself, what is the one thing you will regret not doing in this life? What is your dream? What is your fire within? Now do yourself a favor, take that dream off the shelf and flip one page at a time. Thank you.